Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick video. I've been wanting to make this for a few weeks now, probably months. Been wanting to make it for a while now. Um, and it's to talk about Etsy packaging. When I first started, well, if you don't already know, which if you're watching this, you probably already know. I talk about it a lot. But I have my own Etsy shop. I started it a year ago, or I opened it a year ago. Um, I remember first starting out and being so confused about Etsy packaging. Um, specifically for art prints. So I want to share my knowledge with you. I spent an entire month longer than that. I spent like a year, but a, like one solid month researching the different ways of packaging your prints, how to sell them. So I wanted to figure out the, the safest way to ship your art prints and the most, the cheapest way. And a year into it, I still like the way that I'm doing things. So I want to share my wisdom with you. So first off, if you're going to sell your art prints, you have to figure out if you want to buy your own printer or you can order them elsewhere through a printing service of some sort. Some people do it like locally where they find a local shop and then they print them for you. Uh, usually you have to have like a, a minimum amount of prints. Usually it's at least like 10 or 15. Those are out there. I don't really have any to recommend to you because I print mine by hand at home using this printer right there. Don't judge me, my printer is somewhat dusty right now. But I have an Epson a Photo R 1900. Truth coming out right now, but I was lucky enough to have um, my mom. My mom, this, is my, this was my mom's printer and she does scrapbooking and she takes photos. She gave me her printer so that I could pursue Etsy. I lucked out completely by her giving me this printer. It was very pricey, the ink is pretty expensive, paper is expensive. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this printer, but it gives me great prints, exactly what I need, looks nice on the paper that I use. So okay, anyways, so if you decide to buy your own printer, do your research, just ask around, figure out what printer is best for what you are doing. If you're gonna do color, figure out what would be best with for color. Um, think about the paper, just do your research for that. So, two options, buy your own printer and do it by yourself, at home, by hand, or get a company to do it for you. So anyways, this is what you need. You need a printer. I have two different printers. I have my art printer and then I have a regular, um, it's a brother, I need to see what it's called because I don't even know what it's called. I have this to print out my shipping labels and receipts and accounting stuff. Again, do not judge me, these things get really dusty really quick. <laughs> 2300D. Why do they get so dusty? I don't understand. I just buy paper from like Walmart or Target. I'm sure you can find it cheaper online, but it, it's, I mean, if you're shipping that, it's like, why not just go pick it up yourself? So you want a regular printer. Other people, they'll have like a smaller printer that prints out shipping labels with like the sticky backing and they'll just have that small little printer, but that's only for shipping labels. So you can't really print receipts or anything else on it. That's why I chose to do the regular printer, not the shipping label printer, and then my other printer. This one was not that expensive. I found it on Amazon. It's a solid printer. I wish I freaking purchased this in school because it would have saved me so many trips to the library to print out stuff. And then packaging supplies. You will need, you'll figure out what size you want to print. I only print on eight and a half by 11 and below. So the highest, the, the biggest envelope that I ordered was, I think it's a nine by 12. So it'll fit eight and a half by 11 and below. So this is the one that I have. It's a tab lock. Um, it's nice. I, I like these a lot. You can write on them and it won't smear. I approve of this one. I ordered off Boxery, the boxery.com. When I received mine, it was kind of, damaged a little bit and I'm like I couldn't use like 10 of them so I'm not a huge fan of the boxery the, it's kind of pricey you have to order in bulk so actually I recommend using eBay you could find the same stuff from the boxery on eBay for significantly less and it's free shipping so eBay that is my secret to success for you guys that I'm sharing with you. It is cheaper on eBay. Just make sure you're, you're buying from a seller that has positive feedback. So, so along, with, along with the tab lock, if you're gonna sell prints, um, get a cor corrugated sheet, cardboard sheet thing, and it fits 
perfectly inside this. So what I do is I'll print out, I'll have, I'll have the print and I'll, um, I'll put the print in, in um, plastic sheets. So that's another thing you need to buy if you're going to do it my way. You'll buy a sheet. These are my large sheets. This is the only one I could find. I sold out of 8.5 by 11. I need to order more. But um, you need plastic sheets to put your artwork in so that they arrive safe and um, if, you know, if it was raining or something, you just want to make sure that it's safe. So I use a plastic sheet that fits perfectly over the 8.5 by 11. I'll wrap the print in the plastic sheet and then I'll tape it down onto the corrugated sheet. Some people wrap it with ribbon. You could just do whatever, just, just make sure that the print will stay on the sheet and it won't like move around inside of the envelope. Um, Cause then you could, you have to worry about like bend, bent corners and all that good stuff. So sheet, envelope, plastic sheet. And then obviously you need to find your, your um, fancy printer paper that you want to use. If you're going to have prints over eight and a half by 11, it's going to be more expensive to ship something that's humongous and flat. So for my larger prints, I use shipping tubes and I order these off the boxery. They were fine. You might be able to find them cheaper on, e on eBay. Packaging tape. I go through so much packaging tape to tape on the shipping labels. It gets pricey. Also find some cute stuff to decorate your, your packages with. It makes it fun to open. I love when I receive something from Etsy and you could tell that the seller puts a lot of effort into it. That's how I am with my shop. I like updating my packaging, um, even like the notes. I, I always put in a, a handwritten note of some sort. Um, I get excited when I go to Michael's and I find cute stationary supplies or whatever. I love making it, making it exciting when people open it. So find, find your own quirky way of putting your personality into your packaging. I recommend it. If you're going to sell smaller prints, you can get a 6x8. This, I have 6x8s. I sell my stickers in these and small prints. And I will cut down, I'll cut down one of these sheets so that it'll fit the 6x8. I'll hand cut it. So get yourself some good scissors. I have like three different sizes. I have sharp yellowy ones. I just dropped it. Sharp yellowy ones that will do small like clean cuts. And then I have bigger purple ones. And then I have these heavy duty blackish ones and I'll use that. I'll use a heavy duty one to cut that down. I bought these do not bend, um, this do not bend stamp thing. And I'll put it on the corners of this thing, of, of the mailer. You don't have to get it. It's just, I think it looks professional, but you can handwrite it. If you have cute handwriting, go for it. Also, you need a scale of some sort. This is the postage scale that I use. I think it was under $20. I got it off Amazon. Uh, you have to measure your packages to know how much you're gonna charge for the shipping label. Also, you can either choose to use the Etsy shipping labels. It makes, they make it really easy to use. You just type in the size of your package, what it is, and it'll automatically calculate it for you. Or you can do it where you uh, calculate it your own way and then you use the right amount of stamps I've seen both ways. I have business cards. If you use Vistaprint, it's really cheap. It's like 500 business cards for like $10. They always have deals. They always have sales. Um, throw them in with your package. What else? You're going to want a decent computer. If you have a fancy printer that you're going to use, you probably need a uh, computer that will that's compatible with that printer. So that's something that you need to look into when you're looking for a printer. If you're a traditional artist, you either have to take high quality photos of your artwork or scan them in. For me, I use a scanner um, that scans 600 DPI. And then if you've ever scanned artwork before, it doesn't look that great um, as a scan. So you have to bring it into some sort of editing software. I use Photoshop and just, you know, brighten the, the um, like darken the darks and lighten the lights and take out all, any like dust or anything like that. So you'll need some sort of editing software if you're gonna go that route. If you don't have a scanner um, at home, like I do, you could take it to like FedEx or um, 
some sort, like Kinko's, some store like that, and I'm pretty sure that you can get a high quality scan for pretty cheap. I think I did that in college and it, they weren't too bad. So that's another option if you don't have a scanner. So I use, my boyfriend actually got this for me for Christmas, best Christmas gift ever, let me tell you. Um, I use this slicer thingamajig. This thing is a lifesaver. I recommend this if you're going to be hand cutting your prints. So I recommend that. And it's also nice when cutting your shipping labels. You can get a clean cut instead of hand cutting it and it just doesn't look as professional. Um, so there's that. Another thing you need is some way of doing accounting. I use Excel and I found a template for Etsy sellers that I've, just, I've been using the entire time. So I have this, hev this heavy duty um, filing case. I, <laughs> I started out with this little baby one and then it's getting serious now. So I up upgraded to this big one. So I keep all my receipts from 2015 to 2016. I hear you're supposed to keep it for like at least two years or something. And then I have important documents like my, my seller's permit if I sell in person. Um, just be organized. So you need Excel or, or QuickBooks or some way to keep track of finances. It makes it easier when filing taxes comes around, when that time comes around in the year, you're organized, you're good to go. I didn't cover sticker packaging or um, pin packaging. If you watch my other videos, you'll see pretty much the process and what you need to do those kinds of things. If you're not finding the answers in this vlog, I'm telling you, there is so much out there. The wonderful world of Google will tell you so much about how to be successful on Etsy. So you can do it. Just stay motivated and do research. You'll be good. You'll be good to go. <laughs> so yeah, I hope this I hope this helped a little bit. I hope it didn't scare you too much. It is really it's pretty pricey to um, to start. Etsy stuff as an artist, you kind of have to have a lot. If you're starting it and you're like, yeah, you know, maybe I'll sell a few, then maybe, yeah, you can just get single packaging envelopes from Target or wherever. Um, but it gets pricey if you if you sell more than like 30. It's You might as well just buy in bulk and it turns out to be a lot cheaper. So if you're serious about it, I do recommend buying in bulk get all your packaging materials. It is a, sl a little bit of an investment and it's kind of intimidating at first, but it'll, if, you're, if you keep at it, it'll pay itself. There's a huge bug on the window. <laughs> I think that that's it. I, I know it's not, but I think this is good. This is a good bare minimum to talk about. So if you have any questions, message me, comment, anything. Um, I'll leave specifics below with the printers that I use and all that good stuff. I hope this helps. Don't be too intimidated. It is a little bit of an investment when you're first starting out. It is scary. I'm chasing my dream. This is, this is my dream. And if you're serious about it like I am, do it. Just do it. It's okay to be afraid so long as you don't let it change who you are. Paranorman. I think it was the grandma in Paranorman. Be afraid, but use that that scaredness, that worriedness, and, and just use it to push you. Just be like, I will not fail. That's my attitude. I will not let myself fail at this. It's working. Just be persistent and do your thing. Do it. Do it. Do it now. Do your research. Do it. Just just start your Etsy shop. You can do it. I hope you like this video. If you're not into Etsy and you have no idea what I'm talking about, maybe you'll like my other videos. <laughs> Alright you guys, this was fun. It's really hot in this room. I should have rethought wearing this shirt. See you guys later. It's freaking hot in here. Oh my god. Alright, bye guys.